What's up everybody? This is a special day in Geeky Gecko Creation history. If you take a look in here, our first beautiful high white red tag you just laid. And you could tell because look how skinny her tail is. She is all sucked out. She's still trying to bury those eggs. Now you want to be careful with females that just laid. They could be kind of defensive. We're just going to put her in this little box and she's just going to stay here while we pull what hopefully is going to be a big batch of good eggs. I have a few egg boxes prepared, nothing special. Basically a one-to-one -one mixture of vermiculite substrate to water ratio. And it will create a substrate that kind of clumps together slightly, but is not soaking wet. All right, so let's go in here and see what we got. First of all, take a look at her nest before we destroy it. Can you see the beautiful nest that she built? Now we have lots of ants here in Arizona, so I'm really hoping I got to the eggs in time, but she really buried them deep down in here. They're in here somewhere. I don't want to ruin her nest too much because she will revert back to this nest. Oh, look, here is one egg all the way at the bottom there. And that yeah. actually looks like so a, small. Yeah, pretty good egg though. So we're going to check for embryos later, but let's see what else we can find. There they are. You see that? Usually they will be all buried together. Yeah, tegus have a lot of eggs. And she did lay it in a pretty nice and damp spot, so that's cool. Sometimes they come out odd shaped like that. It could mean that the egg is bad, or it could just be an odd shaped egg. It also has minor discolorations in it. We will check for embryos when we get inside. And she's a big girl, and she's been really plump for a while, so I'm hoping to get a big batch here. Much bigger than leopard gecko eggs, I'll tell you that. And the good thing is I don't see any ants or any little snakes or lizards get into these eggs. So that is good. I know that's something the guys in Florida have to worry about. They have these little snakes that will actually suck the yolk out of the egg. So you can see this one's a little bit soft. We'll wind up seeing if this one actually winds up being good. So we got 12 so far, guys. Let's see what we finish off with. And she laid them right in the bottom here. And our weather here in Arizona is very, very dry, but where she laid it is actually the most moist that she could get the eggs. Oh yeah, she's got a ton here. Here we go, this one's probably definitely bad. Take a look at that. It's very soft and squishy, and this one is not so soft and squishy. 22 so far. Oh my gosh, look how many more there is. <laughs> so she was a very good mama for us. These eggs are actually looking like they're pretty good. Check out how many is still left. I'm gonna guess 40. This is a first for us, so <laughs> 31, we're really 32. excited. You might need another box. Yeah, 35, 36, never a bad thing when working with eggs. So that's 36, and guess what? Four left, 40 on the dot. I mean, I know they're like soft, but I can't imagine passing, giving birth to Oh no, I mean, take a, take a look at that. Here, let me grab the camera since I got a good angle. All of those eggs were in that girl. I mean, you can see the size of these eggs. Look, I'm a grown man, right? Some might have something to say about that, but I'm a grown man. I got big, wide hands, and look how big that egg is. So I just want to make sure there's no eggs hidden. Look at this beautiful nest, though. Look, I can actually lift it up like a bird's nest. And I'm just going to put it down here for now so I can just take a look sees around here. Take a look in here, hon. You can see that whole bird's nest. It was sitting on top of this of twigs and sticks and leaves swirling around about eight to 10 inches high. And then her eggs were buried right down in here. But we found one way over yonder, remember? And she could have popped that last egg out right now as I was picking up her nest right before I got her. Sometimes you catch them when they're still laying and they will actually pop out eggs in your hand while you're holding them. Has that ever happened to you with the leopard gecko? No, leopard geckos are very different. I've never even seen a leopard gecko lay. But tegus, because they lay so many eggs, a lot of tegu breeders, they usually catch the girls laying in the act because they will be laying for hours on end. So mind you, I just got back from my friend John's house and I told him he's also a reptile breeder. Actually, I got this girl from him and I told him, I said, hey, Blush, which is her name, she hasn't been out all day. And so I told him, I was like, I think today's the day she's gonna lay. And then I came home right now, she still wasn't out. I looked under her hide, she wasn't on top of the nest like she normally is. She was under it since last night. And so that tells me that she's been 
laying at some point today for a few hours. What do you think, hon? Did we do a good enough job searching around here? I mean, yeah, you're more than the expert. <laughs> <laughs> just because I found that one way off to the side. Tegu eggs are pretty valuable. I mean, this is your livelihood as a reptile breeder, right? So when you're looking for these eggs, you just want to make sure that you get every single one to stand the best chance of having the biggest clutch possible. So I think that's it. So we're going to put her nest back and we're going to put her in her nest. And then we're going to check out the embryos and see how many embryos we can actually see. Make sure I don't see any in here, you know? Look at this dissected nest right here. Look, it's beautiful. I don't know how they get that swirling effect, but all of these twigs and leaves, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, way of life. It so happens that we have a tree with very long branches. Yeah, and we're very blessed to have that because I wanted to use similar material to what they would have in the wild. And this is what they would have access to in the wild, like leaves, sticks, stuff. So. And one of the reasons is because this is decomposable, whereas sometimes with like hay or straw, it's not as decomposable material. So sometimes it will mold and stuff over time. Most taggy breeders actually use hay or straw, but I just kind of wanted to find something natural because to me personally, I just, I don't like the look of hay in the cage and I want the natural material to decompose. And I always worry about mold with hay and just some horror stories that I've heard about. So I wanted to try to see if I could go with natural materials. And so if you flash our tree, hun, you can see right where I pulled these uh, leaves from. Long vine-like branches really nice tree. Mom is like, okay, I laid 40 eggs, now I need to go on vacation. Yeah, but I have heard from other Tegu breeders that it's good to leave the nest with the female because she'll kind of guard it, protect it and stuff over the next, you know, couple of uh, months. So. so we got how many beautiful eggs on? 40. <laughs> Were you expecting that many? No, I was definitely not. She was very nice to us. It takes a lot of energy out of them, but some girls are very, very uh, feisty. And we'll see. I don't know if she's going to be feisty or not. Yep. There you go. You're a good mama. FYI, all mamas are feisty. Yeah. And if it was earlier in the day, I would give her something to eat. But since she's not going to have time to start digesting anyway, I'm just going to wait till tomorrow and give her a nice rat meal. You can see, I'm sweating. Arizona's already hot. So. Okay, let's go find the cat. Finding the cat. There she is. Effie, come here. I don't want you on the side of the house. The only way we got her to come inside is to chase her. You gotta hand it off to me. Mm -hmm. Thanks, son. Alright, guys, so some really exciting stuff. We are gonna check to see if there are embryos in here, and I'll kind of show you the process that I go through with this. Now, remember, an embryo is what allows the egg to grow up into a baby. It's the start of the baby. Now, these eggs feel pretty good, so I'm hoping that we can find, actually, pretty tough with the lighting right now and everything. Darker. I've never actually candled. Uh, there's a lot of holes and windows that I'm not used to seeing in leopard gecko eggs. Maybe it takes a little time for the embryo to develop. I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure how it works in uh, tegus. All right guys, so I just found out a difference between tegu eggs and leopard gecko eggs. In leopard gecko eggs, you will see the embryo most of the time from day one if the egg is good. But with tegu eggs, it is common that you won't see the embryo because the eggs are a little bit thicker. So let me show you what you will see. And then in a couple days, we'll come back and look at the embryos. So for now, while we can't see the embryos, let me show you what the egg is gonna look like. So you can kind of see, it doesn't look the greatest, right? Like there's no veins, no embryo in there. If I go all the way around, you will see nothing but these white circles, but that is okay because in a couple days we're gonna come back and hopefully we will see embryos in most of these eggs. So for now, you'll just want to get something called press and seal since these containers are not airtight and you will want to rip off pieces and seal it on there. So the press and seal is 12 inches wide, but these containers are actually 13 inches long. So just barely, we are not able to utilize the width of the press and seal. Press it on the surface, rip it here. 
some of what you think would be the easiest things to do are actually the hardest. And so you're literally just going to stretch this out and press it down across all corners. And this will secure your egg box to be airtight, which is essentially what you want in incubation to hold in the best humidity. All right, so now that that's pressed, we'll just kind of fold it over itself a little bit. And remember, we're gonna have to go back in here in a couple days to check for embryos and turn these eggs the right side up to make sure the embryos don't drown in their own fluid. Pop that on there and egg carton number one, good to go. Now that we're inside, you can also get a little bit better visual on what these eggs look like. So you can see that one on the bottom left has a little bit of an oblong effect. Most of them are pretty circular and that's what you're going for. So what we're doing here real quick is we are making a dummy container. And this container is going to hold some temperature probes inside of it so that we can accurately measure the temperature that these eggs are in. I just put 175 grams of dry vermiculite in here and then I added 175 grams of water so that now we're sitting at 350 total grams of weight. Here's what you'll do. You'll take your lid, pop it on there real quick, hold it down so nothing escapes and shake, shake, shake. Back and forth, up and down, circles if you want to. Just get everything as even as possible and it doesn't take much a few shakes and you might want to give it a couple taps like this and now you have your perfect substrate and so when you squeeze it it will barely clump together that's what you want so it's not too wet not too dry it's a one to one ratio and we want to seal it again of course we want to mimic the same circumstances that all the other tubs are going through. But this is just simply going to be our dummy tub, which is going to just hold thermometers in here, which is what I'm gonna get. Okay, so these thermometers you can get off of Amazon. They come in packs of four for like $5. They're pretty cheap. They are just called digital thermometers. And with these little probes, they read the temperature of wherever that probe is. So these were just in our leopard gecko incubator and I'm gonna use them now to set up the dummy rig here for the tegus. Preferably, you wanna use two that are the same brand and came from the same package and two that have been tested to read the same temperature so that you know that if whatever temperature it's reading is accurate. And you can see these two are quickly becoming more accurate. One was in a colder, one was outside the incubator, one was inside of it. So they were two different temperatures, but you can see they are beginning to align really nicely. So you wanna make sure you have thermometers that are the same. You could literally just kind of stand it up. Just make sure that it's visible. I can see the temperature output here. All right, so you can see we got one on one side of the tub. This one at the moment is reading 82.9 and the other on the other side of the tub, which is reading 80.8, which is okay. A degree difference is not gonna be that big of a deal, but ideally you wanna find two thermometers that are reading as close to the same temperature in the same area as possible, so you know they're both accurate. Again, stretch, press, and seal. This is pretty cool stuff. I gotta say, my first time working with it, I'm really digging it. This is what you mainly use for ball python eggs, tegu eggs, maybe even iguana eggs, anything that you incubate in larger tubs that are not typically airtight. Like if you go to the dollar store, you can buy small food containers that are airtight, but these larger containers are a little bit tougher to get airtight. So the press and seal helps with that. And our dummy tub is set up. Okay, I can see the temperatures on both sides of the dummy tub really well. So we're gonna put the dummy tub in the exact location that the rest of the eggs are. And you can see it's reading 80 degrees in there right now. Now this room is actually heated to about 90 degrees, 89 degrees, but this corner stays at about 87 degrees, which you can see right there. So what I want to see ideally out of this thermometer tonight and consistently is somewhere between about 86 to 88 degrees would be perfect for tag you eggs. What a good mama. You can see she's reburying her nest that we just tore apart to get the eggs. Well, we didn't tear it apart that bad, but yeah, she's definitely really skinny. We'll get her some good food tomorrow, but she's 
kind of placing things back in the order that she'd like. Just a good mom. Yeah, that's how you can tell they lay it. Look how skinny she is at the lower hips area there. About the middle of her body down to the base of her tail. Classic red speckling pattern on the legs, on the lower back. Beautiful. Hi, right, sweet girl. Gonna look for some other stuff to put in the nest. Watch how she pushes. That's their front push. It's pretty cool. That's how they gather twigs. Give the light that shines